a lot of you guys can relate to this. If you've ever had a girlfriend or just, you know, maybe a girl that you're having sex with, friends with benefits and, and, uh, you call her a bitch and you say it though. And it's a dangerous thing to do to call a woman a bitch. And a lot of guys will try this and they'll get burned. It's a risky adventure that you're going on by saying that word. You can make a girl instantly lose respect for you, or you can make her pussy super wet. That's the real, real talk right there, all right? And a lot of guys, what they'll do is they'll say it half-heartedly. Now, look, if I'm going to, if when I had a girlfriend and I called her bitch, you know, during sex, or maybe just joking around, or you're joking around, bitch, what are you doing? Give me my cup back. I'm not saying that as you're some nasty bitch. Like, I'm not trying to hurt her feelings. That was never the case. And I'm fucking certain of that. In my mind, when I say that, it's out of, it's out of, I'm, I think you're super cute. I think you're super funny. And there's just like this, this energy in me that wants to call you a little cunt, you know, you little bitch. I don't mean it, I mean it out of love, baby. It's all love. I don't mean it in any other way. Now look, now of course, the woman's going to test you. This is a classic shit test. This is a level, you know, this is a high level shit test though. Only the elite alpha males can say bitch and get away with it. No, I'm not, <laughs> that's, listen to what I'm fucking saying. Don't get lost in the sauce, all right? If you're going to call a girl bitch, she's going to test you, bro. And if you fail the first test, you probably are never going to be able to say it again. I'm not recommending that you try saying this. But a girl is going to test you to see what you really believe. What you really feel in your heart. All right? And so you can't half-hearted bitch. You can't do it like that. It's got to be committed. It has to have backbone and you cannot explain yourself. All right? Because it's not malevolent. It's with love. This is a key for all you men. You got to have a backbone. You've got to have a strong personal philosophy. The world, we got a lot of social justice warriors, especially if you decide to put yourself online, social media, you better have a fucking backbone, dude, or you're going to crumble. If people take advantage of you too much, you're going to be destroyed. There's a Aesop's fable of a lion that falls in love with a farmer's daughter. And he goes to the farmer and he's got a, you know, he's like, I want to date your daughter. And the, the farmer's like, all right, but your teeth are very long, so go ahead and file your teeth down first. So the lion does. He comes back with these little nubs. And he's like, all right. And uh, the farmer's like, well, your claws are very long. I think you should go trim those. And so he does, and he comes back. Now he has nubs his teeth, nub claws, and the farmer takes a bat and just bashes in his skull. And he kills him. The lion's dead because he lost his weapons. He lost his defense. Guys, you don't want to be defenseless in the world. The only way is by developing a strong philosophy about everything. This is going to make you decisive. The people that I have the most admiration for and respect, people I want to be like, you know, I've, these guys seem to have a philosophy about everything. And it internalizes to where they're confident to make assertive decisions, executive decisions, and give their opinion on things. Like they've got a philosophy about relationships. They've got a philosophy about philosophy. They've got a philosophy about religion, about politics, about business. Like they've, they've read the books. They've, they've thought about a lot of stuff. They've studied and now they can make up their mind and have, an, have some, they can have, be congruent. And so when they speak and someone tests them, which this is such a key, and I hope you guys can really grab onto this because it happens. And I can think of another situation like, look, I'm a white dude. If I go to a black guy and I'm like, what's, what's up, brother? Like, what's up, brother? People are gonna, it, I've had, that's racist. No, that's respect. I love black dudes. I love having, I grew up with a bunch of black friends, man. 
they're like they're relent they're confident unafraid just dude i love that they're funny you know i've had black bros in my friend group man you know there's just it's a different culture a different tribe okay so look you can call everyone oh that's racist dude no it ain't fucking racist bro get over that man everyone's gonna try to test you now if you explain yourself to the mob human nature is gonna jump on that weakness and just tear you apart like a pack of hyenas all right you've got to be able to internalize have a personal philosophy and, and then man walk with that that's your fucking sword that's your sword of truth all right that's your truth what you believe and I believe that when I say brother, it is not a disrespect. If I call, decide to call my girl a bitch during a joke, it's not disrespectful. All right? But they're going to test you and get ready. Never explain yourself. Never back down. All right? Well, I mean, this is a good point. Sometimes you need to, to understand that you don't know everything. And that's where you got to be like water. You got to be moldable. You got to learn more. You got to develop even more. All right, but look, this is this also comes down to a personal level where you can't be in an internal battle with yourself. You can't have a cognitive dissonance where one part of you believes this and then one part of you believes this. And we've talked about this with porn. When you watch porn, you can't you can't spend any more time in regret in a relapse, a relapse, I'm posting about relapsing now on the Reddit forums, I'm on mode. Dude, fuck that. If I'm going to relapse, I'm relapsing. I'm busting the nut and I'm moving on. And you know what? I'm going to do better next time. A little more nuance. If I decide I want to read 50 pages today and I don't, I'm not going to fucking fret over that, man. I'm going to be like, you know what? Tomorrow I'm going to, I'm going to turn my phone off. And sometimes you got to be brutally honest with yourself and take executive action. Listen, man, enough's enough. Stop playing these mind games, turn the phone off, learn to focus, get the work done. All right? But you know what, dude? I'm going to be the CEO of myself. I'm going to be the coach of my life. Tomorrow, we're going to do better. I'm going to be optimistic about the future. I'm not going to be stuck in the past and stuck in my current little fuck up because it doesn't matter. We're going to die one day. I'm going to do better tomorrow. I'm going to do better within the next minute, hour, night, afternoon. I had a cheat meal. I fucking had a cheat meal. Onward. Move on. All right? What do coaches do when their team loses? If you're a good coach, just like a good parent, you say, get back up. We're going to get back to practice. We're going to keep going. We're going to do better next time. Next time, we're going to crush this team. A good parent corrects his child discipline course corrects this is the right from wrong thing to do we're going to do better i refuse to be stuck in an internal battle because listen abraham lincoln said some single mind must be master else there be no agreement in anything that means nothing's going to get done if you don't make up your damn mind if you don't have a strong personal philosophy if you can't coach yourself into moving on from these so-called, you know, triumphs or disasters. You got to move forward, bro. You got to move on. All right. You got to move on. So guys, thanks for joining me. It's the, it's Friday. It's the weekend. I hope you guys have a blessed weekend and I'll see you very soon. Peace.